The AFL trade period is a fascinating and intriguing aspect of our game. As time has gone on, it's become increasingly busy, with player movement exploding over the past decade or so. In this video, we're going to take a look back on some of the biggest trades in the AFL over the past three decades, and zero in on the ones that ended up particularly one-sided. Before we get into it, if you consider subscribing to this footy channel to help it grow, that would be much appreciated. One of the first trades I want to talk about is from 2002, and I didn't actually realise the nature of this trade until I started writing this video. In 2002, Wayne Carey left North Melbourne having played 244 games, winning two premierships and claiming seven All-Australian jumpers. Due to some off-field controversies we probably all know about, he decided to move the Adelaide Crows at the end of that season. Despite Carey being 31 years old, the Crows offered a very healthy offer of picks 2 and 18 in that upcoming draft. The Roos used the first of these two picks to draft Daniel Wells, who would go on to play 243 games for the Kangaroos. By contrast, Kerry managed just 18 games for his new club before retiring. Suffice it to say, North Melbourne did very well out of this deal. Now let's turn to a deal in which the Adelaide Crows did very well, and they ended up with Andrew McLeod on their list. McLeod was originally recruited by the Fremantle Dockers for their inaugural squad, but when the McLeod and Fremantle parties met in person, the meeting didn't go so well. It's reported that Jared Neesham actually asked McLeod to stand up to demonstrate how tall he was, which wasn't taken well, and McLeod subsequently refused to play for Fremantle. When the Crows heard about this, they engaged in a trade with Fremantle and the Dockers ended up with Chris Groom. McLeod would go on to play 340 games for Adelaide, winning two premierships, two Norm Smiths, and five All-Australians. Groom would play just seven games for Fremantle before moving on to North Melbourne. While we're on the topic of Fremantle, let's move to the 2001 trade period. While the Andrew McLeod situation can only be described as a fumble, the trade Fremantle did with Hawthorne was by comparison more respectable, but still nonetheless one-sided. The Dockers targeted Luke McFarlane and Trent Crowe from the Hawks, and were willing to trade three of their first four picks in what became a super draft to acquire them, and one of those picks was pick one. They traded one, 20, and 36. Pick one became Luke Hodge, and pick 36 became Sam Mitchell. Now don't get me wrong, Luke McFarlane is a Fremantle club legend, and he had a fantastic 244 game career which included an All-Australian jumper. But Hodge and Mitchell would combine for 612 games for the Hawks, as well as 6 All-Australian jumpers and a Brownlow medal. There is a certain irony as well to the fact that Trent Crowe would win a premiership with Hawthorne 7 years after this trade went down. Now let's turn our attention to 2004, where there was a very curious 3-way trade between Collingwood, Hawthorne and the West Coast Eagles. This deal involved Chad Morrison and Pick 10 going to Collingwood, Pick 7 and Bo Nixon going to Hawthorne, and Pick 37 going to the Eagles. The Pies drafted Chris Egan with their Pick 10, while Hawthorne took Pick 7 to the draft to pick up Jordan Lewis. Morrison and Egan combined for 48 games for the Pies, while Jordan Lewis went on to become a four-time Premiership player at the Hawks. As for the Eagles, they used their Pick 37 from losing Morrison to select Mark Lacra, who to this day is fourth on their all-time leading goal kicker list. 2009 was an interesting year for player movement, with three deals worth highlighting here. Let's start with a deal between the Hawthorne Footy Club and the Sydney Swans. Josh Kennedy was a Hawthorne father-son player who, along with Ben McGlynn, moved to the Swans citing more opportunity at AFL level. In return, the Hawks received picks 39, 46 and 70. Kennedy alone makes this deal one-sided, given he went on to win three All-Australian jumpers, three best and fairest and captained the club for five years. McGlynn was a very good player himself, however, kicking 167 goals from 127 games at the Swans. The Hawks used two of their picks on Sam Grimley and Ben Stratton, while using the third to upgrade their rookie in Matt Suckling. Stratton turned out to be a great selection, but this deal was still one-sided. In that same trade period, there was the high-profile exit of star forward Brennan Favola from Carlton. Favola's off-field behaviour, specifically at the 2009 Brownlow medal, ultimately led to a fresh start being needed, and he joined the Lions in exchange for Lockie Henderson and a swap of picks. Favola actually had a great stint at Brisbane on field, kicking an impressive 48 goals from 17 games. But that would be all she wrote for his time at the Lions, as he was sacked that off-season following more off-field issues. By contrast, Henderson played 100 games for the Blues and kicked 101 goals before moving on to the Cats, where the Blues were able to flip him for another first-round pick. 
This video is brought to you proudly in a paid partnership with BetterHelp, which is a platform that matches you with a credentialed therapist who is trained to listen and give helpful, unbiased advice. Now, the idea of starting therapy may be a little bit daunting. There are some people who maybe are a little bit uncomfortable with the face-to-face -face interaction. And in some cases as well, you might not feel like you're gonna be matched with the right therapist for you because they might not live in your area. But that's the great thing about BetterHelp because you can set up your therapy sessions either through phone call, video chat, or if you prefer text messaging, whatever's the most comfortable for you, it's super convenient. To get started in the process, all you have to do is click either the link in the description or you go to betterhelp.com forward slash true footy. It takes you to a questionnaire and you fill that out so that they can assess your specific needs. In most cases, they will then match you with a therapist within 48 hours. You can then book your therapy sessions at a time that is convenient for you. And if you find that you're matched with someone that isn't quite the right fit, you do have the ability to switch to a different one at no additional cost. So if you think BetterHelp might be the right fit for you, like I said, you go to the link in the description or you can go to BetterHelp com forward slash true footy now clicking that link does support the channel but it also gets you 10 percent off your first month with better help so you can be matched with a therapist who can listen and help also in 2009 the saints took a punt on essendon gun andrew lovett and parted ways with a first round selection for his services unfortunately for them lovett was hit with two different legal charges soon after being recruited and while he was acquitted of one of them much later st kilda sacked him before the start of the next season had even arrived the Dons used the pick 16 they got in exchange as a part of a deal for Mark Williams, who only played four games for them. So this one isn't strictly one-sided, but it was worth a mention given the Saints gave up pick 16 for a guy who didn't play a single game for them. This was compounded by the fact that Luke Ball walked into the national draft that very same offseason, only to be drafted by Collingwood, who won a premiership with them against the Saints the very next year. Whilst we're driving by 2010, I'd also like to point out Carlton and Adelaide's deal for Sam Jacobs that offseason. Jacobs had just played 17 games for the Blues at that point, and he was traded for a very modest offer of picks 34 and 67, which became Patrick McCarthy and Andrew McInnes respectively. Jacobs would go on to play 184 games for the Crows and was a genuine gun. He may not have the long list of accolades like some of these other examples, but he made the All-Australian squad three times for the Crows and was respected as one of the better rucks in the game during this time. The Patrick Dangerfield move in 2015 between the Adelaide Crows and Geelong has to be mentioned here. Dangerfield is one of the best players in history to move clubs, and he was already a three-time All-Australian player when he decided to leave the Crows to join the Cats that year. Geelong gave up picks 9, 28 and youngster Dean Gore in exchange for Danger and pick 50. The Crows picked up Wayne Miller, who has had a respectable career thus far at the Crows, at pick 9. They then on-traded pick 28, while Dean Gore was delisted without playing a single game. On the other hand, Dangerfield had one of the best Brownlow medal seasons in recent memory in his first year at the Cats, won a further 5 All-Australians, won a Premiership and is currently their captain. It always sucks to lose your best player to a rival club, but sadly this deal didn't yield much for the Crows. Now let's talk about the Gold Coast Suns, a club renowned for having some bad luck at the trade table, as well as making some questionable decisions. Let's start with their move in 2017 for Fremantle wingman Lockie Weller. In light of some retention issues the club were having, the Suns wanted to target a Gold Coast native in Lockie Weller who was contracted for a further season at the Dockers. Fremantle, leveraging this contract status, asked for pick two in exchange for Weller. In a move that stunned many in the football world, the Suns obliged and handed over the pick that would end up becoming Andrew Brayshaw. Now both of these players are still playing and Weller is a perfectly fine player, but there's no doubt Brayshaw has exceeded his achievements so far, with an MVP award under his belt already. But when you consider the in-the-moment decision-making aspect of this deal, it was one-sided from the moment the Suns agreed to it. But the Suns weren't done yet in 2017. With the Rovers' supply of second-round picks, they targeted West Coast's future first-round selection in a trade, banking on the idea that the Eagles might fall down the ladder that year and they could optimise their draft picks. The Suns sent picks 21, 26 and 37, as well as their own 2018 second-rounder to the Eagles in exchange for pick 50 and West Coast's first-round selection that year. The Eagles landed Oscar Allen and Liam Ryan with two of these picks, and then went on to win the flag that year. Unfortunately for the Suns, the Eagles winning the Premiership and the Suns finishing 17th meant that they gave up three second round selections simply to move up two spots the following draft. The Suns have had to make some other suboptimal trades in recent years, although those seem to be attributed to salary cap pressures. These deals include giving up Pick 7 and Jack Bowes for a future third rounder in 2022, giving up Peter Wright for a future fourth in 2020, and giving up Will Brody and Pick 19 for a future second in 2021. These trades are different in their nature to the trades mentioned before them, but are still worth mentioning given how horrendously one-sided they are. 
The final one-sided trade I want to highlight is that of Jesse Hogan to Fremantle in 2019. The Dockers sent picks 6 and 23 of that year's draft to the Demons in exchange for Jesse Hogan, who is coming off a 47-goal season for Melbourne. With 23, the Demons drafted Premiership player Tom Sparrow before sending pick 6 to the Gold Coast Suns for Stephen May. For the record, that selection ended up being Ben King. Hogan had a disappointing stint at Fremantle, kicking just 18 goals from 19 games, before the Dockers flipped him to GWS for pick 54. As I recall this, Hogan has found career best form at the Giants, sitting atop the common medal tally after two rounds. So there you go, some of the more one-sided trades in contemporary AFL history. Let me know in the comments of any others you can think of, and for now, I'll thank you for watching the video, and say goodbye. Cheers.